It's time to play Cow Chicken Pig, the game where you can be a cow, a chicken, or a pig. So stand up and choose which animal you want to be. But choose carefully because if your animal is eliminated, then you are out.
Presence of my enemies. 
adventurers, welcome to another episode of How To with Puma McKinsey's, the show where I show you how to do stuff. Today, we're gonna look at another one of those fancy video questions you uploaded to the website. Let's take a look. Hey Puma, mac and cheese. I was wondering, how do I change my life? Great question, Bobby. First of all, my name is McKinchies, not Mac and Cheese. Second, that's a deep question about how to change your life, but I can help. Let's say you're a plumber and you don't want to do that anymore. Simple, just grab a car key, a twig, a glue stick, and some bubble wrap. And assemble it like so. And there you have it. You have yourself a stethoscope, and you're a doctor ready to start your very own practice. Ah, oh, here's someone now. Hey, sir, you look sick. Uh, what? Yeah, open up. Say, ah, oh, let me take a look. O okay, ah. Uh... Oh. oh, goodness. Just as I suspected, you have cotton candyitis. I have what? Yes, open up. You need some medicine. <laughs> Ah, do that 11 times every single minute for six months and you might just be all right. You're crazy. You see, Bobby, old pal, it's easy to change your life when you have the right ingredients to make it happen. I mean, say you're done being a doctor. Well, if you get some toothpicks, a salami, a wrench, and an old bed sheet, you could use these ingredients to turn yourself into a bunny rabbit. Oh, hey, uh, Puma, you mind if I say something? <sighs> Sorry, guys. It's my boom operator, Jed. Come on, Jed. Uh, listen, I, I, I really don't think that that is the best way to answer this kid's question. What do you mean? Who wouldn't want to be a bunny rabbit? Oh, I'm sure at one time or another, every kid has really wanted to be a bunny rabbit. But I think what he meant by how do I change my life was more like, how does he change and not be the way he is right now? You know, uh, the way he talks, the way he acts, and the way he treats other people. Kind of like Paul. Paul? Who's that? Is he on another network doing a survival show? No, no. He's in the Bible. I think maybe you should hear his story. Well, I'd love to. How do I do that? Well, how about we have you do your sign-off first so we can let these kids get into their lesson today. It's all about Paul and how he went from being a very bad person to being a very good person with God's help. Well, that's awesome. I'd love to hear about that. Okay, that's great. So you might want to, you know, sign off. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. Well, kids, that's all the time we have for today. See you next time on How To with Puma McKinchies. What's up, everybody? It's me, the SKI to the double T L E S. Skittles in the hizzy, and I'm ready to tell you what's up. This is so awesome to be able to start this brand new series about the Apostle Paul. Today, we are talking about how to change your life. So every time somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. God can turn your life around. Oh, yeah. When you give your life to God, he can turn your life around. Now, I don't mean that he just turns you in circles. Oh, I got to tell you, I'm a little dizzy. No, see, when I say that God will turn your life around, I mean that when you ask God into your life, he will change you into a brand new person. All that sin in your life is erased and you are brand new, baby. So anytime, I mean anytime somebody asks you, what's up, you tell them. God can turn your life around and that is what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor and I'm living for my savior. 
Skittles out, baby. Ah, yeah. What's up? Hey, good morning everybody. This is Pastor Debbie and I'm excited to start a new series called How To. And this is our first in this series and the Bible story comes to us from the book of Acts chapter 9 verses 1 through 21. And the title of the story is Saul Becomes a Christian. It's about a young man named Saul and he was a very, very mean man. Saul was the enemy to a lot of Christians. He traveled from city to city, arresting Christians and putting them into prison. He even had some Christians put to death. He used his power to do that. He was full of anger and hatred for God's people. Now, one day, Saul was traveling down the road toward a city called Damascus. Everybody say Damascus. Damascus, that's right, when suddenly a bright light shone in front of them. It startled him so much that it knocked him to the ground, and a voice began to speak to him from inside the bright light. And the voice said, Saul, I am Jesus. I am the one you are persecuting. Get up and go to Jerusalem, and I will tell you what to do. So now Saul had to change directions. He got up, but he realized at that moment that he was blind. He couldn't see a thing, not even his hand in front of his face. He had some men who were with him on his journey help him to Jerusalem, where he met a man named Ananias. God had told Ananias to go find Saul and lay hands on him so he could be healed. God told Ananias, that Saul was going to become one of the biggest preachers in the world. Ananias knew of Saul's reputation as a killer of Christians, and he was a little nervous about going, but Ananias trusted God. Ananias went to Saul. Ananias laid his hands on him, and he healed him through the power of God. Saul could now see. Eventually, Saul's name was changed to Paul. He stopped sinning and persecuting Christians. Thank goodness. Instead, he began to preach and teach about Jesus all over the world, everywhere that he went. How could someone like Saul have such a radical change? How could Saul go from killing Christians to eventually becoming an amazing preacher who helped others become Christians. Well, there's only one way that something like that could happen. It's through the power of God's love, through the power of the Holy Spirit. God loved Saul so much that he was willing to forgive him of every sin he had committed. Wow, that is awesome news. God changed Saul's life. And today we're going to learn how the power of God can do the same thing for us, for you, and for me. If God can forgive Saul, that mean, mean man, and change his life in such an amazing way, there's no doubt that he can do the same thing for you and for me. Amen. Ah, yeah! What's up? Hi, everybody. This is The Gary Show. I'm Gary, and uh, we are here in my bedroom at my mom's house. I mean the studio. And uh, during this show, I'm going to teach you guys how to do things that I am exceptional in. <laughs> but before we do that, let me teach you today's power verse. Today's power verse says, anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. That's a great power verse, isn't it? Now I could use some help from the boys. So I want all the boys to stand up and say the power verse with me, Gary, on the count of three. 
Ready? One, two, three. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Great job, boys. You can sit down. Now I need some help from the girls. I want all the girls to stand up and help Gary. On the count of three, we're gonna say the power verse together. Ready? One, two, three. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Sorry, you sit. <clears throat> now I'm good power verse, right? Now I'm gonna show you something to do that I know how to do it. As an expert, I'm gonna show you how, how to do it. I'm gonna show you how to hang up a shirt. First, you need to have a shirt. Then you need to have a hang, a hang thing. Then you put it, them together. From under, it goes. Then, perfect. The, Mom, I'm shooting the Gary show. I'll come down and comb the cat later. Sorry about that. Anyways, why don't we have everybody stand up and say the power verse together with Gary. I'll, Please, everybody, on a count of three. One, two, three. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Great job, everybody. You can sit down. Well, that's about all the time I've paid for. I only get three minutes and 52 seconds. It's almost gone. But don't worry, because next time, Gary's going to teach you another power verse, and then I'll also show you how to do stuff. But before we go, I really want to say something that I've been wanting to say the whole time during the show. It's super important, and Mom said I shouldn't say it, but I'll say it anyways, because I really, I have to say it, and it's going to change the world. Um, see, Gary... Let's get right to the message this morning. Have you ever heard any of these sounds? Do you know what each of these sounds are? What are they for? Yeah, that's exactly right. They're to get your attention. Have you ever wondered why the sounds are so loud and obnoxious? And after listening to them for a while, they can get really annoying. But do you know why the sounds exist? They exist in order to get your attention. When someone wants you to know the train is coming, they blow the train horn. Listen. When someone wants you to know there is a tornado in the area, they blow the tornado siren. When someone wants you to know that a fire truck needs to get by, or that it's time for school to end, they play these sounds. Those are all used to get our attention. Today, in our Bible account, we met a man named Saul. God really wanted to get Saul's attention, and Saul was not paying any attention, kind of like some of us today. Saul was not a good man. Saul had done a lot of bad things to Christians. 
he had persecuted them just because they are Christians. And persecuted means that he had treated them badly and used his power and authority in the wrong way. So one day, when Saul was traveling down the road to a city called Damascus, do you remember what happened? Yes, that's right. God sent a blinding light from heaven, and he knocked Saul to the ground, and he spoke to him. And he said, Saul, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now, kids, why do you think God did that? Well, God will do whatever it takes to get your attention, your attention and my attention. When we aren't doing things right, God will do whatever it takes to get our attention. God does not want us to sin, but when we do mess up in sin, he will do whatever it takes to get our attention. Does that mean that God is going to send a blinding light and speak to you in a loud, booming voice? Well, Probably not, but God will get your attention in other ways. So you might ask, why would God want to get Saul's attention? Why didn't God just kill Saul right on that very road? After all, Saul was a really bad guy. He was going around killing Christians and using his power and authority in a bad way. We can learn a very important lesson from the fact that God didn't kill Saul, but instead chose to get his attention. You know, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you and to give you a hope and a future. You see, God has a plan for everyone's life, and he wants us to be able to do that plan, to do our ministry assignment. No one, though, is beyond God's love. We can learn that from the Bible account of Saul. An important thing to remember is that every soul matters to God. Not just one group of people, not just people with brown hair or people with, with uh, green eyes or people with blonde hair or even people with red hair, which we sometimes call gingers. <coughs> God wants everyone to know him, every person in the world. And that includes your entire family, everyone in your school, everyone in this country, and every person in the world. Let me say that again. Every soul matters to God. All souls matter to God. Yours, mine, the bullies at your school, the bad people, people all over the world who don't know him. Every soul matters. Does God really love people in prison? You bet he does. God loves everyone, even the people who have killed each other and killed other people. Does God really love the people who don't believe in him? Well, yes, because there was a time that many people didn't believe in him. I knew about God and Jesus when I was younger, but I hadn't made the decision and commitment to make God the leader of my life. And he kept coming and coming and coming after me. God loves everyone, even the people who have chosen not to believe in him. Sometimes when you've messed up and sinned, you've thought, said, or done things that go against God's word, you may think that God doesn't love you anymore. But the good news is that he does. The God news is that he does. He loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. If you've cheated on a test, kids, God still loves you. He wants you to repent, which is turn away from the sin of cheating. But he still loves you. If you've lied to your parents, God still loves you. If you've stolen something from the grocery store or from Walmart, God still loves you. If you've said bad words, God still loves you. If you've thought bad thoughts, God still loves you. No matter what we do, God will always love us. Our sin separates him from us, separates us from him. But he never stops loving us. He never stops calling our name. He never stops 
with his incredible and abiding love calling us to come to him. Maybe you have no problem believing that God loves everyone, but you just don't believe that God can use everyone. In other words, you don't believe that God actually has a ministry assignment for everyone. For someone as bad as Saul, God can love him. He did love him. But he isn't ever going to be able to do big things for God. Right? Wrong. Anybody can do big things for God. God can erase your past and change your future. Remember why we're here at FLAG? To know Christ. To be transformed by the power of his Holy Spirit, no matter what we've done, and to make him known. That's what Paul did. Paul was a bad guy. But God transformed Paul by the power of his Holy Spirit. And then Paul went out and did his assignment, which was to make Jesus known everywhere that he went. God changed Saul's life. Saul, the guy who had preached against Jesus. Saul, the guy who had even killed Christians, became known as Paul. You know, God changed Saul so radically, so much, so transformed his life that he needed a new name to identify him with Christ instead of with the enemy. Paul went on to lead thousands of people to know God. Let me say that again. Paul went on to lead thousands of people to know God. Praise the Lord. Paul even wrote most of the New Testament. <coughs> that goes to show you that God can use anyone to do his work, even the worst of sinners. Now, you don't have to be the worst of sinners for God to give you a ministry assignment because God says he has a ministry assignment for everybody. So what about you? What is God going to use you to do? Maybe you'll be a teacher, perhaps a missionary, a pastor, or a chef. Ooh, that sounds good. Maybe you'll lead a Bible study at your school and help others to learn not only about Jesus, but to know Jesus, to know who he is, the Son of God, the one who can forgive sin and will when we come to him with a repentant heart, when we're willing to turn away from sin and ask Jesus to help us. So I, I don't know how God is going to use you. Maybe you're not sure yet either, or maybe you know exactly how he's going to use you because he has been speaking to you, and you have heard his voice through his word and that still small voice inside of you. What I know is this, no matter how bad you've messed up, God will erase your past and change your future. Oh, that is the good news, kids. God can erase your past and he can change your future when you come for when you come to him in the name of Jesus. He can use you to do big things for him. If God can change a mean old rotten guy like Saul and he can change his life and make him fresh and make him new and forgive him and use him so amazingly. Oh kids, he can change your life and he can use you. All you have to do is give your life to him. Ask him to forgive you from your sins and just watch how God can change your life. You know, you might like to do that today. You might want to make the Lord the leader of your life. So pray this prayer after me. Oh, precious Jesus, I have made so many mistakes in my short life. I have done things, I have thought things, and I have said things that go against your word. And I ask you right now, in the name of Jesus, to forgive me, Lord. I mean it. I want forgiveness. I need you. I need your forgiveness, O oh Lord. And I believe, Lord Jesus, that you can and will. You're the only one who can forgive my sin. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for your forgiveness. I make a commitment to you right now to let you be my leader, to follow you all of the days of my life, and to speak to you many, many times during every day in prayer and asking for your help. Thank you, O oh Lord, that right now, in the name of Jesus, you are changing my life. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, 